What's going on guys? My name is Crazy Dog and welcome to YouTube 101. This is an introductory series brought to you guys by myself as well as Elgato Gaming to make sure that you guys get the most out of their products to become either successful or just have more fun on YouTube. So in this episode, we're going to go over some of the equipment that will accompany your Elgato card to make sure that you can start producing high quality videos on YouTube. Stay tuned guys. Alright guys, welcome back. Again, my name is Crazy Dog, and first we are going to go over how you're going to actually record that gameplay. Now, if you're traditionally on PC, of course there's going to be some alternatives, but we're going to focus on the ability to do console. At the end of the day, if you're working on a budget, or let's say you just happen to get something for Christmas, or the holidays, or something like that, whether it be an Xbox One, 360, PS4, PS3, Heck, you could even do your mobile phone. You're gonna need one of these pieces of equipment. So we're gonna go over two of the Elgato cards that I would recommend to get the most bang out of your buck. All right guys, so the very first one we're gonna go over is this guy right here. Now this one is the Elgato HD60 Pro. Now the Pro in this case stands for the ability to actually use this as a PCI interface. Okay, so Pro doesn't stand for PCI, but you get my drift. Now with this guy here, you can actually plug it directly into your computer to make sure that you're getting the fastest recording possible. This guy will do full 1080p at 60 frames per second with zero latency at a file size up to 60 megabits a second. Now, if you guys maybe only have one monitor or one television or something like that, this is going to be a great solution for you because it gives you the ability to almost play flawlessly through the actual preview window through the Elgato software. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth it, guys. All right, and now we've got product two. Now, you guys should be more familiar with this guy here. This has been out for a little while. This is just labeled the HD60. Now, with this guy here, you can still do 1080p 60. Um, but it records at 40 megabits a second. And the reason why it's just a little bit slower or a little bit smaller, I should say, is because of the confines of USB. So this guy actually has to break down that file size coming into the Elgato to make sure it's smaller to put it through your USB. And then it basically opens up that video file again within the Elgato software to capture the highest recording possible. Now, you will get a little bit of latency because of that. So you can't really play in the preview window. If you're streaming, there's gonna be some ways to get around that to add a little bit of latency to your other equipment to make sure everything's on par. But I did wanna highlight this guy because not everybody has the ability to plug the other one into their computer. This guy here will work on any PC that has the ability to interface via USB. Now, both of these guys are going to have HDMI pass-through. And essentially what that means, guys, is it has two HDMIs, one in, one out, and it gives you the ability to put this in between your console or your PC and your monitor or your TV or whatever you're gaming on to make sure that it passes through that video so you can play while recording. Now, this guy here, especially if you have it into a laptop or something like that, you can actually just put the laptop off to the side, you don't have to game through the laptop screen, you're just passing through that information. So that's really, really cool and a good benefit of these guys here. Now, let's say you just bought these or maybe you got one of these for the holidays or for your birthday or something like that. We're gonna go over some of the other hardware that will better accompany these guys here. All right guys, so now we're gonna be going over some of the equipment that you're gonna to want to invest in after you get one of those Elgatos. Now, we're gonna run under a scenario that you guys have only $100 left over from birthday, holiday, whichever scenario you wanna use, and we wanna kinda of talk about where is the best place to spend that. Now, some people might say right off the bat, blow it on games. I'm gonna say you're wrong, here's why. Anybody can record games on YouTube. It's a given. Some of the consoles even have the ability just to do it within the console itself. So why is somebody going to watch your content when they can watch 
anybody else's with the same game. It just, it doesn't make sense. It's gonna be pure luck if anything else, guys. What I think is very important would be audio. So, to be a Let's Player or to put up highlights or something like that, a lot of people are going to be watching the content for more than just the content itself. They're going to want to actually get to know the Let's Player. And to do that, you're going to need good audio. Now you can use your headset and things like that, but let's actually take a second to go a step further because again, if we have $100, we want to maximize our return and maximize our potential. So I would recommend a high quality microphone. Now you can go with something like a Blue Snowball. Uh, sometimes you can even get away with a Yeti under $100. Sometimes there are deals, but there's a lot of other great options. And it seems like the Yeti has the market when it comes to YouTube. So I'm gonna show you guys what I have, and why I use that in just a second. All right guys, so this is my microphone. This is a Audio-Technica ATR2500. Now, this little bad boy is an all-metal chassis. Very, very durable. If you drop this on the floor, I'm more worried about the floor than I am the microphone. So that's one thing I like a little bit more over the cheaper options or maybe like the Snowball or something like that. It does come with a small stand for the desk. I myself put it on a scissor arm, but that's absolutely not necessary for you guys starting out. Don't worry at all. But this is what's called a cardioid microphone. And with this, the uh, diaphragm is right here, and it's actually going to pick up all of the audio directly in front of it. So instead of using something like a dynamic microphone or something that you guys are more used to with Singer, it's actually going to pick up what's directly in front of it like this. So what I do is I either put this on my desk or I put it sort of up over my monitor so I could just talk into it naturally. So I'm not worried about having it right in front of my face. I like kind of the look of just a clean face cam. And we're gonna go into face cams a little bit deeper in just a moment. So this microphone does record extremely high quality audio and it also interfaces with USB. Now there are alternatives to USB. You can go with XLR as an example, but with XLR, you're then worried about getting an XLR cable, you're worried about going into a mixer or a preamp, something that has 48 volts phantom power, and then you have to interface that into your PC. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're gonna wanna stick with USB. Uh, but this is very clean. This is one cable that supplies power and the ability to transmit all the information directly into my computer. And in future episodes, we're gonna show you how to actually get the most out of this when you're commentating and things like that. Uh, it does have game controls here and the ability to monitor your audio if by chance you do want to plug in headphones and listen to yourself. Uh, for Let's Plays, not really that necessary. We'll go over in the future maybe how to do that a little bit more appropriately. But for now, looking at the microphone, this is what I would recommend. They also make a higher quality version of this. It's the um, Audio-Technica ATR2500. A um, little bit over $100. This guy here run me about, I think, $70 to $80 on Amazon in Canada. So that's really why I picked this guy here. All right, so congratulations. You now have a microphone. Great choice, by the way. You know, I would have got that one if I didn't get the one that I have. Now, with the microphone, let's say we now come into a little bit extra money or we had a little bit left over or what have you. How can you enhance your gameplay or your videos other than the Elgato for your actual recording and the microphone for your commentating. The next step that I would recommend would be a face cam. Now you don't have to do a face cam, you don't have to reveal your face. You look at Vano, so some of those guys, they are very successful when it comes to commentating and let's plays and things like that without a face cam. I personally use a face cam, and the reason for that is I just like the personal interaction I have with the audience. I think it's funny to see my reactions and things like that. Now, using a face cam for me, I find that a little bit more natural. I can look at the camera like I am right now and almost see a person standing there instead, and it's a lot easier to talk to a person or a camera than it is to talk to nothing. So that's kind of why I use it. So we're gonna go over some options on face cams here in just a second. All right guys, so there are a lot of different face cams that you can look at. Microsoft makes a few options and so does Logitech. Now, you don't have to go big. 
I would recommend maybe a little bit more of an investment if you're also going to be using it for vlogs and things like that. But if it's solely for face cam, you can go with anything starting with even the Logitech C, I think it's called the 270. Um, 720 is fine. Keep in mind, you're taking a screen that's this big and maybe you're recording this big, but then you're breaking that down to something like this. And when it comes to taking 720 like this and putting it on a 1080 screen, you're gonna notice the difference, but as you shrink those pixels, that 720 is gonna become such a tight resolution that really you're not gonna notice a huge difference. So that's probably where I would start. Now the spread between the cost of webcams now really isn't that great, not as much as it used to be. So I myself used to use the Logitech C615, I think, it was great. It did um, 720p at 30 frames a second, 1080 at 15. 15 was a little choppy, especially if you have already invested or got gifted a great recording device that will record at 60 frames. Overlaying 15 on top of that, you're, you're gonna see the difference. So what I've personally used, and this is what I used at the start of my channel as well as for my streams, would be the Logitech C920. Now, this lives by a lot of different names, the C920, C910, C930E. At the end of the day, it's about all the same. So this will record wide angle with their Zeiss lens at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. Now, the nice thing about such a high quality lens is you're actually going to be able to capture a lot more detail. So for face cam as an example, things will look clearer, things will look nicer. I believe it's got a bigger lens, so it lets a little bit more light in, which is really nice as well. Uh, for me, I use a, a green screen to sort of crop out the background as well. So having something a little bit higher quality makes that keying out a lot easier. And in future episodes, we're gonna go over that keying also. So this is what I use. I would recommend it if you guys can swing it. If not, again, start a little bit smaller. I had said to you there's Microsoft options as well. They have their uh, life cam studios and things like that that you can use shoot maybe for at least 720 is my personal recommendation but whatever you have I'm sure is going to work absolutely fine for you guys because at the end of the day the best equipment isn't what you can't afford it's what you know how to use and what you have so take that away and make sure that you're using the most out of what you have all right so we've recorded the gameplay we've recorded our audio we've recorded our beautiful faces I think there's one thing missing and that one thing is how we're actually going to listen to the gameplay now you can't listen to the gameplay through your speakers on your desktop computer or on your tv because if you're capturing your audio at the same time what's going to happen is you're going to get a really bad echo so investing in headphones is going to be extremely important to make sure that you're getting the best quality to play with as well as the best quality for everybody else to actually watch your content. Now, there are a lot of different headphones that you guys can get, and even starting with earbuds is absolutely fine. You're only listening to the game, so these only have to be as good as you want them to be. Obviously, there's a lot of people that have Astros and things like that, and that's more of a personal preference. And I mean, we'll get into some other options here as well. Now these, for an example, are what I personally use. So these are the Superlux 668Bs. These are a uh, open back, studio quality headphone. And the nice thing about the open back is you can see it's got sort of some grates here. And this helps let some audio out, not enough to sort of disrupt my recording, but enough to open that sound stage so it's not just very muffled and sort of just pushed into my ear. The other thing that's really nice is I can also hear a little bit of background noise. And the reason why that's important is I used to find myself shouting when I did my Let's Plays because I couldn't hear because I was blocking my ears. So being able to monitor my own audio lets me also speak at a more natural level. Now, I guess sort of half of the other reason why I got these as well, it's just vanity more than anything. They look kind of good on my head, a little bit more than maybe some of the other headphones that you can get. So if you're vain and you're using face cam, you know, maybe grab some pretty headphones. If you're not using face cam or you don't care, again, use what you have. It's the biggest takeaway, guys. Whatever you have is going to be the best for you. You can always make investments in the future if you feel you need to. 
All right, so I guess the last takeaway is going to be something that's sort of overkill. It's something that I like to do and something some professional streamers and things like that do. Maybe the bigger YouTubers like Jacksepticeye and things like that do. Um, but it's enhancing that face cam. Now, using the Logitech is great. That's gonna give you awesome quality 1080 30. But again, stacking that frame rate is going to look maybe a little bit funny to some people. You're putting 30 frames, which is here, over top of gameplay, which is 60 frames. And you can see a difference. It's not a big difference, but it's there if you look for it. So what a lot of people have done is starting to record their face cam with an SLR or with a camcorder. Now I'm recording this with an SLR, so you can sort of see the quality here. Uh, SLR is the one nice thing as well, is they have a much larger sensor than any other camera really on the market, unless you go with a professional camcorder. Now, letting more light in, means you have a better ability to key out the background or just see yourself. Uh, you can also record in 60 frames a second on a lot of DSLRs that are maybe a little bit more than the introductory level. And that's what a lot of people would like to achieve. Um, I myself, I use a camcorder and I'll show you guys what I have here in a second. So this is the actual camcorder that I use. This is the um, Sony, CX405, I think 405 just means that I get it in the kit. I think it's the same as the 440. Uh, but with this guy here, the nice thing is it records at 1080, whew, it came to life. It records at 1080, 60 frames. And I also have the ability to monitor myself to make sure that I'm actually in frame all the time and that I can sort of get the best quality I can out of my face cam. Now this has, I think a 5 8 inch sensor, so it doesn't let as much light in. So you really have to go with some more light in your room to take full advantage of this. Now I have here and here two big studio lights. They're dual head continuous photo lights. They run 800 watts a stand with, no sorry, they run at 400 watts a stand, which are 200 watt bulbs in each dual head. So I'm running 800 in total. And that's what I use myself to record my face cam. Now, not in this episode because I'm still waiting on some equipment to come in the mail, but in a future episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually take this or a DSLR and use it in conjunction with a dual Elgato setup for streaming. So you can actually get 1080 60 on a stream, which technically is impossible right now. There's no webcams that will record 1080 60 natively. So once we get that equipment, we'll go into that further. I'm going to have a link in the description below as well for you guys to sort of take an overview of the software that you will need in conjunction with the Elgato software to make that happen. So that about wraps up this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a better understanding now of some of the equipment that you may want to look for or that may enhance your stream or your recording going forward. We'll learn how to use the software for basics as well as some more intermediate and advanced applications. Until next time, my name is Quasi Dog. This was YouTube 101, sponsored in part by Elgato Gaming. So give them a big shout out guys if you wanna see more videos in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.